It is the last state in the country with a Liberal government and Premier Jeremy Rockliffe has uh, embarked on a bit of a gamble by calling this election here a year early in the, ability, in the interests of winning the stability of majority government. State Labor leader Rebecca White is looking to avoid a third consecutive electoral defeat for her party, but it is the minor parties that could very well hold the balance of power here as Australia's island state increases the number of seats it's got in its parliament from 25 to 35. Joining me now live from Hobart is Tasmania's opposition leader, Rebecca White. Rebecca White, very good morning to you. Good morning. Well, I've been here in Tasmania, as you know, uh, on the Fridays ahead of the last three state elections. And on each of those Fridays, I've spoken to you as the opposition leader. As the old saying goes, it's deja vu all over again. What makes you think for you it'll be third time lucky tomorrow? Well, I hope it is third time lucky. I've got a lot of experience that I bring to this job, but also we've had 10 years of a Liberal government and certainly the sense I feel across the community and I'm hearing back from Tasmanians is that after 10 years, it's time for change and it's time for a better future. I've got a great team. We've been focusing on the cost of living and taking urgent action to provide relief to Tasmanians. And that's no doubt the number one issue this election campaign. All the polls, though, suggest that the Labor Party is tracking anywhere between, uh, d depending on which poll, poll you look at, 22, 23 per cent to 29%. That uh, is a, a pretty bad outcome if it was to be translated to votes tomorrow. Um, on that basis, it really struggled to get anywhere near majority government. Well, I think it's still a wide open race. A lot of Tasmanians haven't made up their mind yet, but what they are sharing is that after 10 years of a Liberal government, they're seeing challenges in our health system, in our uh, housing system. There's certainly a cost of living crisis. And if the Liberals haven't fixed it after 10 years, why would you give them 14? There's certainly a work to do between now and tomorrow, of course, Michael, but we're up for the challenge. I'm not afraid of hard work. And I think that Tasmanians are thinking very carefully about how they vote tomorrow because they know that their vote's going to shape the future, not just for the next four years, but potentially the next decade. And um, what we bring with our plan is uh, really tackling some of those key challenges, making sure Tasmanians pay a Tasmanian price for power, building more houses, building hospitals. They're the sort of things that Tasmanians need a government to focus on that have been sorely lacking over the last 10 years. Uh, if you fall short tomorrow, if, if both major parties fall short and there's the prospect of forming a minor minority government, I know you've said you won't do deals as such with, with the Greens, with independents, with minor parties. Would you be prepared, though, to enter into an arrangement with other groups to form government? I have been very clear about the fact that we won't do any deals and I am asking for all the endorsement from the community and their support to form government tomorrow so that we can change the government and focus on a better future for our state. But I've also said that I respect that we live in a democracy and I respect the will of the parliament. I'd be seeking the support of the parliament to endorse our plan so that we can't, can start uh, taking, uh, taking action on the cost of living. We can start building the houses Tasmanians need. We've got a terrible situation here where people can't afford to buy their own home. They can't afford to find a rental that's affordable for them. So there's a lot of things that need to change in Tasmania. Voting for the Liberals clearly won't deliver that change because they've had 10 years. We haven't seen improvements in those areas. So I'd be asking for the endorsement, not just of the Tasmanian community this election, but also the broader parliament if we are successful so we can deliver on that change and make those improvements that Tasmania desperately needs. Would you go as far as offering ministries to, say, Greens or independent MPs in the form of a minority government? No, we wouldn't do that. And I want Tasmanians to have confidence that if they vote for a Labor government, that's what they get. It's a Labor cabinet. We won't be trading away positions within a Labor cabinet. We won't be trading away our policies or our values. I think Tasmanians can see that what we stand for is taking urgent action on the cost of living, repairing our health system, providing permanent employment for our health workforce, for our teachers, so they stay here and don't leave the state, and making sure we build the houses that Tasmanians need. Uh, we want to be able to deliver that, but the only the only way to do that is to vote Labor this election. The only way to change the government is to vote Labor this election. Voting for minor parties or Greens or independent candidates could still see the return of a Liberal government and I don't think anyone wants to give them 14 years.
Okay, but it, it did seem uh, pretty well. I'm old and ugly enough to recall uh, Premier Lara Giddings, the Labor Premier, uh, 14 years or so ago, had a Labor government with Greens ministers. That, that seemed to work okay. Well, uh, my commitment to Tasmanians is that we want uh, to form Labor government. I want to form a Labor majority government. But if we can form an arrangement where we can deliver our plan, I think it's important to respect the will of the parliament and we deliver on that. But we won't be doing deals. If we are elected to government, it'll be a Labor government with Labor ministers in the cabinet. And Tasmanians need to have confidence that if they're voting for a Labor candidate, if, if they're voting to elect us, that that's what they get. Now, uh, the AFL stadium, the proposed stadium there in Hobart has loomed as a big issue. Uh, it'll cost uh, anywhere up to a billion dollars. The Labor Party's been very clear that if you win, you'll win, seek to renegotiate the deal with the AFL on the stadium. But the AFL has made it very clear, Rebecca White, no stadium, no AFL football team. So that leaves you with very few options, doesn't it, if you happen to win? Well, I'm pleased that the CEO of the AFL has also publicly said that he'll work with whoever is elected, which is an appropriate and respectful response. And I look forward to being able to sit down and negotiate a better deal for Tasmanians because um, people would be aware that we've just been granted the 19th licence in the national competition, which is a very exciting moment for Tasmania. And a Tasmanian AFL team, both a men's and a women's team, won't be put at risk if we're elected on the weekend. I fully support it and our team fully supports it. But we've also been very clear that we don't think that it's the right priority for the Tasmanian government to use taxpayer money to fund a billion dollar stadium. It's a project that didn't go through cabinet. It hasn't been costed by treasury. It was really sprung on the Tasmanian people. And it certainly wasn't included in the original deal that we were seeking to get with the AFL to deliver a team. Tasmanians have never had their say on this. And I don't believe it's the right priority when we do have a massive crisis in health and housing and cost of living. Those are the fundamental responsibilities of a good government to address. And that's what my government would prioritise. Rebecca White, uh, just before we go, election campaigns, as you know, can be pretty bruising, pretty robust affairs. I want to finish with an uplifting note. What's something you like about the Liberal Premier, Jeremy Rockliffe? I like Jeremy as a person. After 22 years in the Parliament, there's no doubt that he should be commended on his service uh, to the public. And 10 years, particularly as Deputy Premier and Premier, would have taken quite a toll on him and his family. So I think that they should be proud of their contribution to public life. Rebecca White, really appreciate your time this morning. Thank you so much for joining us.